So Dwayne is going to go to this first kennel here, and he's going to demonstrate assessing behavior through the kennel. I want everyone to participate and everyone to have the opportunity to sort of weigh in on how they feel this dog's behavior is as they're assessing her before he leashes her up, and then we're going to take it straight out that door that way. And I'm going to have a few of you, whoever wants to, grab a toy out of the big red bin as we head outside, okay? Hi, Mama. Hi, Bubba. So, as Dwayne is feeding her treats, I'm noticing, first of all, I'm noticing she has some mucus on her nose, which wasn't there the last time. So I'm going to make sure we put in a medical slip for her. The other thing I'm noticing is a little conflict, a little conflict in her behavior. She's very wiggly. Very good. All right. A little conflict in her behavior. She's very weakly, but she also has her weight in her back legs. So her weight wasn't leaning forward toward him, but it was holding back. So she was like, I want to like you, but I don't know yet, right? We're going to go outside. I'm going to have at least one of you grab a toy. We've already made friends, so I know I'm okay holding her. Okay, Mama. All right, Jane, we're going to follow you, and I want you to call out quarter when you go around the corner, okay? Yep, this way. Okay, move quickly. Move quickly. Come on, Mama. I want you to keep her closer to you. Yep, walk your hand down her leash. Hold her closer to you. I want you to yell out. Thank you. And then we're going to go right outside. Yeah, whoever wants to grab toys out of the bin. Uh, will you need a bag to Jen's office, please? Uh, both, thank you. All right, Dwayne, I'm going to have you sweep around. I want you to go over there to that first gravel run right there. Exactly. And then we're just going to practice putting the harness lead on her. Yeah, actually just let her sniff. Or let her Hi baby. <laughs> yeah, so so we hung out the uh, we hung out the uh, yeah. 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 So Look at her eyes are closed. Yeah. So I met her on Tuesday. I decided that I wanted to have you all meet her today if she was still here. Um, because of her, her behavior conflict. Um, so I think it, what's going to be interesting is as we, and I'm, I'm not going to put her harness lead on her because she and I have already established a trusting relationship, but I am going to have one of you assess. It's very possible. But also she's, do you, do you see how crouched her, her body language is? Yeah, she is, she is not comfortable. She is interested. She's very curious, but she's not comfortable per se, right? Um, she is definitely, and well, and a little bit of it might be impacted by, there's definitely some more mucus than when I saw her on Tuesday. So yeah, I'm, I'm guessing she probably doesn't feel good in a little of the lip licking and the, the um, yeah, the little extra sniffing is, is, might be part of that. Yeah. So I, oh, Dwayne, excellent job assessing her and excellent job crouching down. I want you next time to leash her in the kennel because these collars are not secure. Grabbing them by the collar, first of all, might be perceived as a threat, especially with a fearful dog. Um, so 
dangling that leash inside of the kennel with your foot bracing there. I know, Mama. I know, Mama. I know. I know. I know. Yay. She found her favorite, didn't she? Mm -hmm. I already had my couch is currently occupied by a lot of I know um I think she came in Monday or Sunday she's still very new um so so leashing the dog in the kennel is going to be essential they're definitely grabbing them by the collar and then trying to leash them gets your hand in there in a way that concerns me about your hand if the dog has any sort of overstimulation mouthing behavior or if they are very fearful and are a bite risk um Matt, Definitely leashing them in the kennel is going to be the safest possible option. And then holding her a little closer to you than you had her as you were walking her down that aisle way prevents what she started to do, which is sort of snipping or snarking at the other dogs, which then again is just, that's her expression of her stress behavior, right? This is a sweet dog. She's not like a snarky dog, but she's stressed enough that she started to snip and snark at the other dogs. We want to minimize that before it starts. We want to sort of manage that experience for her so that she doesn't feel the need to have to do that. So you're going to just, basically, I want you to just keep her, you're going to leash her. And next time you bring her out, you're going to keep her really close by your side. And I'm not talking about yanking on her leash to bring her to you. That's what you were waiting for. I, I, I saw you. Yeah. But use both of your hands here to keep nice and close, right? She's walking against you, she's maybe touching you, you're building confidence, you're building contact, and you're guiding her with your body physically. Also, this is a lot easier to hold on to than this, right? This is limited by the strength of your arm, which is definitely not as strong as all four paws on the ground, versus this, physically you have a lot more, you have a lot more control, which you're gonna need as the dog gets bigger than this one. All right, Dwayne, I'm gonna have you bring her over to this gravel run. And then we're gonna practice, yes. Yes, let go, you put the feet. Yeah. And once you're in and close that door, then <clears throat> Dwayne can drop that lead. <clears throat> All right, so Tokyo has this beautiful approach to humans which indicates that her previous experience with humans might have not always been that she receives a positive interaction when she gets close to them. There is some conflict that is demonstrated in her body language, which is I am curious about you, but I am also crouching, my ears are down, I am licking my lips, which might also be part of her nasal drippage so but it, it, it could indicate that she's a little on the nervous side right see how she's lipping licking her lips with even though emma's giving her the fabulous oh, right she's up she's a little on the nervous side which is totally fine and understandable this is a stressful situation we have i don't know how many people 12 people here right um so emma, actually do you do you mind doing the demo for the harness lead yeah so um, yeah, you're already crouched down there. Just give her a little bit of space. And do you want to swap leads? Cause this is, this is actually the harness lead. Although I have some, I have some knots in there, but yeah, yeah it's just, it's, it's, yeah, it's double, it's double the length. So we do have, uh, there should be five harness leads that I asked Marilyn to purchase that are available in the volunteer office. So actually, that was a perfect example. If you need her to get close to you, instead of pulling on her, I want you to practice walking hand over hand to her. It's a subtle thing, but all it does is it removes that physical pressure, which for an overstimulated or very, very stressed dog might be that last straw that broke the camel's back if they are already not feeling this interaction. She's feeling this interaction. But in the future, if you need her to come to you, physically like walk yourself over to her more so so that the two of you are meeting in the middle. So she's done a consent test already because um, <laughs> you, because you've been petting her all over. Um, and, and I believe that Tokyo is saying, hell yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't, I, I am not noticing any residual conflict with her behavior. I think that she's saying, I'm very comfortable with this situation. So 
Emma's positioned the metal ring on the back of, of her neck, right between her shoulder blades, and then she's wrapping the, the lead right underneath her arms there. And then she's gonna take the handle of the lead and she's gonna be very patient with me because I have tied a lot of knots. It goes actually right through that little, yeah. Yep, and I'm gonna remove, sorry, darling. I know I'm, yeah, I know. I'm trying not to put myself in. I just wanted to take the carabiner off. Good. All right. And then um, with a dog of her stature, I'm trying not to say anything negative about her beautiful female body. Um, yeah, move it above the nipple line just so her, um, so it's not pinching her nipples. As it is in previous puppies that it's doable. Yeah. Yeah. We hope so. Yeah. All right. So now she's on a harness lead and this can actually, you know, since she's comfortable, oh, she's not that comfortable. Since she's comfortable putting that down there. Do you know why I say that? Why? She licked her, she licked her lips, right? So she was like, oh, there's two people here now instead of just one. And you just went right in there for the, yeah. So she wasn't extremely comfortable with that, even though she and I do have that previous relationship that was still like a, a touch that might have had a little bit of anxiety with it. Um, so with, I, I just moved the lead down so it's underneath her collar so that way it has less pressure on her neck, which I would recommend for all dogs because neck pressure is not necessary for handling. In addition to, um, it can really increase their stress if they are limited in terms of being able to breathe. Um, and then, it, uh, does someone else wanna try and uh, use the uh, <laughs> use the chest touch, the consent test? Would someone else be willing to use the consent test to take her harness off so we can take her back to the kennel? Normally she would have the harness on for the entire walk, but we are limited on time, so I wanna make sure that we have um, enough time to take out another dog. Anyone, anyone wanna? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, bye Beth, thanks for coming. Yep, totally, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dwayne's gonna take it. So consent test again, it's gonna be on her chest, not her ears. Yep, nope, 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 nope. I'm gonna back you up. I know you wanna go right in there. Um, okay, so the consent test, you're gonna touch her chest. My mamas. So you're gonna touch her chest and you're gonna see if she leans into it and she's actually doing a little bit or not that. So you're gonna drop the lead and let her do what she wants to do, which is sniff this piece of poop over there. Cause this is her walk. And even though we are limited on time, this is, this is part of the experience of working with a highly stressed dog. Even though she seems to want to meld into you, again, there is some conflict in her behavior and we've got to honor that. And that's the reason I'm telling you not to go for her head or for her ears, which she might perceive as, it could be a perceived threat, especially I don't know if you all noticed, but a lot of the dogs that are in here, their ears look terrible, right? They've got ears that don't look like they've been cleaned in forever. That is really uncomfortable, right? Or some of the dogs that have cropped ears, they might have some trauma around their previous experience with touching their ears. Bottom line, reaching your hand over their head is generally perceived to be more threatening than having your hand down low and sort of just like stroking her chest a little bit, just giving her a nice little um, yeah, but she's saying right now, she's kind of saying, I need to get my sniffs in. You guys are trying to rush me and, uh, exactly. And it's a Saturday and here I am looking so cute. Oh, uh, yeah. Beautiful. Nicole. Thank you. Yeah. She actually really offered that chest to you and she's leaning into you. Yeah, 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 she, she did, she not only offered the chest, she sort of pushed her weight forward into her hand, which is really lovely. Yeah, yeah, and you know, the more you do it, the better you get at it and the faster you get, and then you're, then you're, then you're going, hey, Alona, how do I avoid smacking myself in the face with the lead, because I move it so fast, right? Uh, no, because we're going to walk her back to her kennel. Hi, mamas. Hi. Yes, he is. Yeah, and I want you. I want you to do consent tests though, cause see, do you see? Yep. Do you see how how much she's crouching? She did come to you, 
but she came to you with conflict. She came to you unsure of what you were going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mama. Yeah, mama. And the yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the hell. Yeah, that's the that that's the the way we want to end with that consent test is getting not proceeding until you get the hell yeah. You know, the I'm gonna lean into you. I am comfortable with you. Depends. Depends. Getting in your in the kennel with a very stressed dog is a is a very high intensity situation. That's why I bring her out here for this. We are increasing the amount of space, so decreasing the spatial pressure. We're also decreasing the amount of noise. And in the shelter is higher level of stress inherently. It's already associated. It's already associated with bad things, right? Yeah, mama. She doesn't really care about that, actually. I think, I think we're just, yeah. Like making a call that in the, or one that's in the back would, would suggest going in the kennel then? It depends. I would suggest standing at the kennel, tossing treats to them. Are they taking the treat? Are they willing, if you toss the treat, are they taking the treat? And when they take that treat, are they giving you whale eye and going, you best not come over here. I don't know about you. I like your treats, but I don't know about you. Or are they taking that treat? And like her, she had the conflict. She had her weight in her back paws, but she was wiggly. She was relaxed ears. And she was demonstrating the lip lick. So we had multiple signs in both directions, which means she feels a couple of different ways, which I think all of us can relate to, right? Feeling a couple of different ways. Hey, like I want to come volunteer because it's amazing. And also it's really freaking sad. Um, so she is a great dog to really think about that level of assessment. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I understand you put some Tritos in your pocket. I understand it might not be the first time you had Tritos in your pocket. I smell, I smell. Also smell your dogs from at home. Okay. What you going to do with those hands? You going to pet. Yeah. Um, that's good. You're getting a hell yeah now because you respected her early, which is beautiful. Um, yeah. So. I think it totally depends. I would love to give you guys a clear cut answer, but you have to observe the signals. And when you're getting a mixed signal with a dog like her, we didn't have to deal with it because she came willingly out to the front of the kennel and she was able to be leashed. She already has an association with the leash is what that tells me. It's not necessarily that we won her over. It's just that you standing there with the leash, she knows she gets to go outside. Someone walked her before, right? Someone might've also hurt her before, maybe or maybe just the the situation that she's in is overwhelming we don't know that but there is a conflict there there is not a total give to her interactions it's a little withholding so with that if a dog is demonstrating this conflicting behavior i will leave it up to you to go into the kennel it could improve the situation I want you to be 100 sure it's going to improve the situation before you go in though so i want you to take the time to toss the treats through, to watch them observe. Are they able to eat? If they're not able to eat, I personally would wait until my next trip in to go. I would probably give her a big old Kong, toss it in there, let her finish that peanut butter, have that association. Oh, the last time I saw this person with the leash, she fed me peanut butter, it was amazing. It lasted for 30 minutes and I was there licking peanut butter off my face for the rest of the day. That's a great association to leave with and much better than that person physically came into my space. And even though they had yummy things, I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen, right? Um, so, so make sure before you go in. I just feel so bad at the ones that like that. that would just... 100%. 100%, yeah. And what I would recommend is taking the time to stay outside of the kennel and to work on building that relationship. When they start picking the treats up off the floor, when they're able to take treats, when they start relaxing that body language, right? When they start opening up, the ears come up a little bit more, they're less crouched down, they're less holding in, and they're more open to that interaction. When they start approaching you, that's an opportunity to see if they'll take treats from your hand through the, you know, through the kennel door. If they're then going to be willing to allow you to leash them where you can come out here and have less spatial pressure to then start that consent test to try and interact with them. If they're not willing to leash them, 
you know, we don't know what their last association with a leash was and whether it was a positive one or not, right? It could be a really negative one. So we also have to deal with that. All right, so who wants to take her home? Just kidding. <laughs> I know, I know. When the fever over, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we don't have we don't have uh, those type of relationships, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, it is too bad. Um, I, you know, I will also tell you that the the local the neighboring shelters are also really super full. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Most of them have collars. If they don't have a collar. You can head back past treatment and actually grab them a collar. And I would go ahead and just remember that, or I usually have my phone on me, so I take a picture of it. Remember the number to tell the kennel manager. I put 1462 on 328, kennel number 328, right? And make sure that they can record that in the system. If they're not wearing a collar, which some of them aren't, they, they definitely should all have a collar on. Because if she slips out of that slip lead, yeah, yeah. All right, so who wants to take her back in? Because I want to practice, as you're taking her back in, I want her to be close to her body because she did start that, start that snippy behavior with the other dogs. I would like to see how do we sort of walk her back in without letting her stray too far to the side. Does anyone want to practice that? Do you want me to demonstrate it? And you guys just observe and then we practice it with the next one? Okay. Everybody's like, why do we have to take you back? Cause she's so wonderful. Yeah. So I actually noticed on Tuesday, she has like a, um, she also has a, a split tooth. So she's, yeah. So I'm also wondering if part of her body language is also pain, um, which I definitely would, you know, I. I is, is a very real component and could be, she has, I don't know if you noticed, but she's a little swollen around the mouth. Can you tell she's a little swollen? Um, I mean, not, not excessively so, but there's a little bit around her snoot area. So that's why I looked at her mouth. Um, no, but I, I'm just saying like, this is a great example of how you can't know the full extent of what's going on with each dog just based on initial visual. And that part of her hesitancy might be related to if she has a really severe toothache, but she definitely needs a tooth extraction for sure, at least one. Very shy. I was love you to know I'm adopted. I know, but I'm like, so I'm like. All right, all. I'm gonna say this out here before we head in, because uh, it's really loud inside. I'm gonna take her back to her kennel. And then we're gonna go approach a shy dog in dog holding, and we're gonna do some assessment through the kennel. I haven't walked the shy dog yet, so I don't know if we're gonna get to take her out, but we're gonna try. Question two. What if you have a problem getting, wanna go back in? Totally, un totally understood. Why would they wanna go back in there, right? She's, her, her tool is more of this, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, sometimes they, they definitely don't want to go back in. It kind of depends on the dog. And I want you to base that on your interaction with the dog. Some dogs are going to be food motivated and you can make a little treat trail. Yep. Toward the, toward the, um, toward the kennel. She is not particularly food motivated. She's much more motivated with her physical presence in proximity to me. So I'm going to be able to lead her back just by the fact that I'm going to go with her. Um, but treat trail, toys, make it a game, right? You can also make it a game. Another way, another thing that I probably should use more often with shelter dogs, but I use a lot with my dog at home is, <gasps> yeah, she's like, yeah. And of course she's like, I don't care about this. Yeah. Um, is right. I know all of this is on camera. Um, is running backwards or jogging backwards as long as you're not in physical risk of danger because then you're the fun thing they get to run toward. Um, oh, that's so nice. Okay. 
Please make sure there's a little air gap there. Thank you. All right. Okay, I know, we're gonna go back. I know, I hate that. I hate, oh, oh, mama. Oh, mama, oh, I saw we. I saw we. You run into my leg and you don't really wanna go back. Um, the Kongs are actually right. They should be in a big 50 gallon. You're amazing, you already grabbed this for her. All right, um, just location, location wise, the Kongs are in a big 50 gallon bucket. There should be a lot of them in that uh, dishwasher room. Can someone glance in there and see if they're still in there? Yep. So if you have one of those really shy dogs or one of those really overstimulated dogs, you wanna grab a Kong, put them back in their kennel first, and then grab one of those Kongs. In the next door down is the refrigeration room where there's big Jif jars of peanut butter where you could peanut butter in the Kong and then bring it with you for Good girl. I know mama. I know mama. I know mama. Yes, mama. Can everyone hear me? All right, you're gonna leave the leash on the dog as they go in the kennel. Then you're gonna do the reverse of what you did before to unleash her and get your head back. There you go. Now she's not jumpy, so she's not gonna bang, but pr promise me like that you'll do this with every dog, even if they're not jumpy, because you, I need you to get in the habit of it. Yeah, yeah. And then, yep, make sure it's all the way in, and then this. As we are gonna go over identifying a couple dogs' behavior through the kennel. This is the girl that I'm interested in meeting. She is, not available yet because she's still on straight hold. She just came in. I want to assess her behavior through the kennel. I don't know if we're going to end up leashing her up. I don't know because we're not going to know, right? I also am not certain that she is hearing. Oh, wow. Because of her body language earlier when I cleaned out Vader's kennel, um, when I went in, she did not really notice me until she sort of woke up, which tells me that she might not she might not be hearing, so I'm not certain. Um, so I wanna assess her body language, and then we're gonna walk through number 11, so holding 11 all the way down here at the end. Marilyn has flagged for us as um, a potential dog that needs some more time. So if we don't get to take this one out, then we'll take number 11 out. And if anyone needs to leave at any time, just wave at me and head out, it's fine. Um, but I'm gonna keep going for the rest of you that are able to hang on. Um, do step back a little bit once we go into holding up against the wall here just so we're not physically all at the same presence yeah so we're not super overwhelming exactly yep hi Bubba's. hi hi yeah we're gonna so i don't know yeah all right so come on actually as you come in go walk past james and just keep on coming down this so i don't think she's here um yeah i suspect she's probably not come on in and just go ahead and yeah once you're in all the way make sure to make enough room down here so yeah so everybody can see so so with the dog that i'm not certain if she is hearing i'm not going to i'm not going to open the door and try and touch her because i don't think she knows i'm here I don't know, but I don't, I doubt. Well, not really. Um, yeah. 
it, it's possible. See, that's what I said. When I came in here earlier, she did end up noticing me. So I'm not sure if it's not hearing or if she's shut down. It could be both. It could be one or the other, right? So this is the importance of the out of kennel assessment because I still don't know what I'm dealing with, right? This is live. I don't actually know. Can she hear me? I don't know. Is she shut down? She was also shaking earlier, right? And her, what's, this is today's the 24th. She came in yesterday, right? And I did see on the lost pages, she was found. Yeah. Okay. She's actively not. Yeah. So guess what? I'm not going to take her out. Um, so I'm not going to take her out. If I was on my own, I might decide to spend some more time with her. But more than likely, knowing she came in yesterday and observing that she's been hit with two treats and is flinching when the treats hit her, so she knows they're there, but she's not turning, she's not moving. I am seeing a dog that does not want this interaction, right? Okay, so this is an example of next time I come in, I'm gonna try the exact same process with this dog, and I'm gonna see how far do we get with this dog. I'm letting her dictate the next steps because she's communicating, nah, right? Okay, so I already took Vader out today. Yeah. That would be great. So, yeah, so at present, I am inviting you into a group of people who do this. That's what this class is about. Yeah. So you have the opportunity to practice change. this. They can change so much. Exactly. She came in yesterday. I know background on her because I stalked her on Facebook and saw that she was left tied to a tree. That's a traumatic experience. But next week, she might look different. Yeah, her ears move. She knows we're here. Um, so I have determined. I still don't know if she can hear yet, but I know that she knows we're here. All right, so we're going to try this one on the end next to Kelly. Hi, Bubba's. I took Vader out earlier, so. And I know he. Huh? Yeah, yeah. He has an interaction today with their dog. So I guess he had an interaction last night. And then he's going to meet their dog today. So this is a dog that Marilyn has identified. Hi, Bubba's. So this dog on the end is a dog that Marilyn has identified uh, via the volunteer Facebook group is timid and fearful. And I think that that makes sense, right? He's in the back of his cage. And body language, what do you guys notice here? If you want to come on in. Yeah, come on in over here to 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and also curious. I mean, look, imagine what this looks like to him, right? He's got this narrow viewpoint and there's like all these faces peering in. This is a lot, right? So let's practice whatever level of getting smaller you feel comfortable with. If you're not comfortable kneeling, that's totally cool. If you'd like to crouch or if you'd like to peel against the wall, let's do that, okay? Now notice what changed in his behavior there as you all came down. Did you, did you see a difference? Julie, we got to work on this. That's bad. That's, that's real bad. No, I'm, just, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I know. I know. <laughs> down, yeah. Down yeah. 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 And how about this is who, who's giving him this stuff? A hundred percent. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so all of his signals are on high alert, right? All of his like street smarts, everything is telling him he's got to pay attention to who's got the Tritos. Oh. Yeah, see, I did the same thing. That's terrible. <laughs> he looks like he's waiting to escape. Yeah. Like he, you open that door, I'm getting out of here. Yeah, Bubba. Yeah. So he's definitely very curious, and he's taking treats, uh, but he's taking treats all the way back there, right? So, nope, bad at this. Yeah, so I'm not going to make him come closer, but I might decrease the distance at which I'm tossing the treats a little bit. There you go. Okay, so he did, but look at how much weight he still has in his back toss, right? It's all shifted back on his back legs. So he's still, he's coming forward, but the weight is still in those back toss. 
lot of skill though. Mm -hmm. All right, so I actually think we can leash this dog up. I think we're gonna be able to leash this dog up. I don't think we're gonna be able to leash the dog up with everyone here though. So who would like to leash the shy dog? Who feels comfortable with the, the shy dog leashing? Oh, yeah, actually, if you guys are gonna stand up, then step away if you're not gonna leash. Where you can still observe, but where your physical presence is a little less intimidating. James, you're okay, because you're with the camera. Julie, you wanna do it? Sure. Yeah. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna get out of the way, and actually, James, I'm gonna have you get out of the way of the door, because once she does leash him up, she's gonna wanna move to the door very quickly. So again, Julie's crouching down. You don't have to get all the way down there, but get your face out of the way of the door in case he decides that he's no longer a timid, cheerful dog. Uh-huh. I know. Yeah. So th this is also my way of flagging her for you all. So when you all come back next week, I want you to look for this dog and I want you to see are we able to make progress with her, right? Her name is Cookie. But that, you know, she, we, she doesn't know her name, right? Because she was found as a stray. Well, it depends on what, it depends on what talking to him does. Julie, if you want to swap out with me, I might be able to see a little bit better. Yep. Hey, Max. All right. This is, I'm going to show you guys something that I occasionally use but not always. And it, it's a guess. I don't know if this is helpful and I'm not always going to use this, but I'm, I'm definitely not gonna use it with a dog that's right here in my face. But what I noticed about him is he's curious. And I wanna give his curiosity a little bit more room to explore without impeding on his space. So I'm not holding the leash up yet, but I am showing him there's a little bit more of a world out here in hopes that he wants to explore. Okay, so he is not responsive to that. Whoops. Mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%.
little part. So it's here. Actually, it's here by the volume of people. Yep. That's the central judgment. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, then. Yeah. You're what? You're the lefty? Yeah, because he's not like. <laughs> it's okay, Bubba's. Yeah, it's okay. You want to go for a walk? Corner. Okay, Bubs. Come on. Oh. Okay, Bubs. Come on. That's fine. That's fine. So this dog had a ton of conflict in behavior, but like his fear was really winning over. He was very curious. The one thing that I noticed was he was actually super sensitive to seeing James's camera, unfortunately. Um, and the reason that I, yeah, and the reason that I observed that, thank you. <laughs> the reason that I observed that is every time he would kind of approach me, he'd also look over my shoulder at the camera. Um, and so that's totally normal. Uh, there's a lot of dog, actually my, my own dog is a little fearful of like things strapped to people. So here's the thing, don't extend your hands, none of you. If he wants to come sniff you, he's gonna sniff you. Um, and just allow him to, yeah, he wants to go back his side. It's okay. He's really scared. He's scared, it's okay. Oh, do, 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 do. Kelly, do you mind just taking a couple of steps forward? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so even though I said I wanted him to determine his own path, I really don't want him to go in just yet because this is the first opportunity that we've had to kind of get him out of his kennel. And I'm not certain, yeah. So I don't totally trust his body language around any of you. So I'm actually not letting him approach you just because he's on that level of fearful where, yeah, he's, he's tight. He's not relaxing as much outside as I would like hope 
for, in order to have interactions with a lot of people. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take him up to the run in the field. And I'm gonna let him run around out there. I think if everyone stays on the outside of the fence, I think that would be good because it it's a lot of people, right? Um, and you're welcome to toss. Let's do that. Yeah, let's take this up to the field. Okay, did you guys see that? Sorry. He just, so he just pushed at the end of the lead like he's trying to get out. So that's the other thing is I'm also going to use some like defensive. I don't know that he loves that. Yeah. I, I, so I'm also going to use a little bit of defensive handling here to make sure that I have enough tautness on the slip lead because he's, he's trying to get out, right? Um, okay, everybody start heading toward the, the field. Yeah, yeah, he's ready to bust out. Um, and all of this is honestly very understandable and really kind of normal as a stage for a shelter dog to go through. Oftentimes they do kind of go through it at the, maybe the beginning of their um, shelter experience, but other dogs might go through it after being here for five weeks because they haven't had as many positive experiences as they could have had, right? Um, I say stage because the reason I emphasize the importance of assessing their behavior through the kennel is because his behavior might be a little different in two weeks. Um, we're, we're not sure. Like we would hope that he would be a little less timid, um, but it also might depend on how he's feeling that day. Maybe he had some weird, maybe it's some weird food that disagreed with him, right? Um, so it's important to do this on a daily basis, even with dogs that you have walked previously, because you don't know where you're gonna be meeting them on that day, at what level of behavior. I would highly advise against it. Yeah, I would high. Yeah. Well, I think the reason that I would advise against it is that nine times out of 10, both of the dogs are gonna be relatively stressed. And. Let them run out there if you should wait till somebody gets done. Yeah, so I think it's as important as anything else to as continually assess that dog's behavior. So he's not jumping on me because he wants to be near me. He's jumping on me because he wants to get out, right? Um, so I think there's not going to be, in general, a positive outcome from allowing them to interact on the leash in most circumstances. And I think the risk of having a very negative outcome of them interacting on the leash is very high. I do leash interactions because... Yeah. So, yes. So, so, so some of the volunteers do planned and very closely managed leash interactions and we keep them super brief and only do it when the adoption coordinators or the rescue coordinators indicate that they need additional information on that dog's sociability with, uh, with other dogs. He was looking at dogs, I'm like, we should probably go. We, we, yeah, I mean, right now, there's not going to be any positive interactions happening, right? Like, he is totally, he's freaked out. He's going, I want to go back. He didn't even pee. Did you guys see him pee? He did not pee, right? But here's the thing. I don't care. We got him out. We're making this impression. I'm going to allow him to leave on a nice impression. I'm going to take him back. And I, I, and a lot of people would be like, well, he didn't even get a walk. He didn't get exercise. Can someone grab some of those chicken feet? And then you can observe through the door. Sorry. OK. I'm uh, sorry, I'm waiting for Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> 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 
so we are we are the people. You know, there are there are caretakers here that have phenomenal experience working with shy and fearful dogs. But in addition to that, um, they also have their roles and responsibilities, right? They have their cleaning, they've got to do intake, they've got to do vaccines, they've got to do interactions, they do pretty much everything. So we we are that, um, does everyone know the stray hold dur durations in terms of legality in the county? So three days if the dog is picked up as a stray and has no sign of an owner. Sign of an owner is they have a tattoo that indicates they've been spayed or neutered um, or visibly neutered because obviously you can, you can tell they are checked for, supposed to be checked for chips when they come in. If they're wearing a collar, um, then that would be a sign of owner, even if the identification is not on. And, and the dogs that are on stray hold would ideally go on here. It's three days if they don't have a sign of owner. It's five days if they do. So if they're microchipped, if they have a collar, if they come in with a harness or they're wearing a bit of clothing, it happens, dogs with scarves come in, um, or, uh, or, oh yeah, spare neuter scar. Um, and those are business days, so three business days, so not inclusive of Sunday and Monday, correct? So the dogs will be on hold for a while, and throughout that time, we can actually gain a lot of information on those dogs, and we are able to walk them, but obviously you want to take note of their intake date because they're going to have recently gone through some level of upheaval. If they're an owner surrender, there is no stray hold, right? The owner has relinquished legal rights to that dog. And if they are an owner surrender, it would be noted on their kennel card, okay? They're not supposed to have stuffed toys in the kennel, but this type of toy is great in case the dog starts biting the leash because this is leash approximate, but more interesting, right? So it's leash adjacent in terms of it's long and it's kind of chewy, they can get their mouth on it, and I can stick it in my waistband. So no, they can't take this back to the kennel, supposedly. If they have it and they don't want to give it up, again, you, 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 know, you make a judgment call at that point. You are going to attempt to trade, but if you physically cannot trade, it's not worth the bite risk of reaching your arm in there and trying to grab it away just to say that they didn't have it in their kennel. Dogs are in restricted when they're, they're supposed to be in restricted when they're not available to the public, which is all of the ACC cases, that's, uh, that's animal, yeah, it's animal court, right? Animal, animal control court, where basically either the human has done something really wrong or the dog has done something really wrong. And we don't know, but they're, they're legal evidence and we can't interact with them. Humane holds, which means that the dog has come in in some way, shape, or form. Animal control either impounded them or they came in as a stray and then an owner turned up and we're like, why is this dog in this bad condition, right? And they were moved to a humane hold. We also cannot walk those dogs. Then there are, some of them are, which is why looking at the cage card is important and you have to take note. Yeah, you, you have to take note. If it says humane hold, you cannot walk that dog. This sucks, by the way, you guys, this sucks. However, this is like Maryland state law. It's not even Prince George's County law. It is Maryland state law that these are, these are court cases that unfortunately we can't interact with those dogs. You can feed them all you want to through the kennel. Just make sure that, you know, you're not feeding them things they could like choke on or whatever. Um, Cause you're not gonna be able to go in there and help the dog out if you can. But they cannot be removed from the kennel. You cannot go in the kennel with them because they are considered evidence. Okay, um, and again, it sucks, but that's that's the, the law and I don't want you to, yeah. And also you don't know, like sometimes they might be humane hold because they attacked like seven other people, like, you know, whatever. Um, they would probably be ACC hold if that's the case. Uh, then in addition to those dogs that are on hold, which I'm not gonna show you today, there are a ton of other dogs because there are 60 kennels in this room, 60 kennels with a guillotine which means that when the shelter gets really full, they'll shut the guillotine and then there's 120 dogs back here. They've never done that in all of the kennels. Nope. No, what are those? The dogs are humane hold, ACC hold, and any other dog that they stick back there, most likely pitbull terriers, which are not adoptable to local residents, which are back here because they- They'll never be in that room. We'll be in that room. <clears throat> You will, you're not allowed in the room, right? We used to be allowed in the room. I used to clean, I mean, clean it. And it's actually kind of a nice room to clean because it's unlike most of these rooms, it's more open. 
and all of the kennels have guillotines, so you can easily shut the dog on one side and get a really nice, good, solid clean. Yes. Yeah. Parents, I know that people that volunteer Correct. Yes, you are correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So senior volunteers walk. You can walk all the, the all the dogs that are not on hold that you want to. Doesn't matter what type of breed it says it is, right? Obviously, still assessing the dog to make sure it's a safe interaction, just like we have practiced multiple times. But if you live in Prince George's County, Maryland, you cannot adopt a dog that is, has been labeled an American Pit Bull Terrier, a Terrier mix, a Staffordshire Terrier mix, or a Staffordshire Bull Terrier mix. That is just Prince George's County. If your residency is in the county, you cannot adopt them. Your friends can't adopt them. Your family can't adopt them if they live in the county. They are eligible to be adopted. This is only recent, by the way. As of the spring 2023, one year ago, they became eligible to be adopted outside of the county. Previously, they were not eligible to be adopted at all. They, they, could, go, they could be released to rescue, but more likely they would be euthanized. Yeah, because there's only so many kennels in the, in the yeah. And I want to stress the importance of these are laws that the county has, has put in place. This is not an individual decision by any of the staff here. If you talk to the staff here, please have a lot of respect because a lot of them care a lot for these dogs. They are not people who really wish the dogs ill. And when they have to put the dogs down, they do not want to do it. And if you ever notice a caretaker having a bad day, you know something just happened to their best friend. So please. I cannot state enough, understand that it's not, you know, as frustrated as you might be about how some dogs have limited opportunities or limited outcomes, it is not the individual decision of any of the staff members in this building, including the director. Yeah. Great families still here? I don't know. Probably not then. Yeah, probably not. Hey, um, all right, so I've got, all right, so I've got uh, a walk list. I'm gonna pull up that walk list and then I'm gonna radio for, a yeah, you made a lot of progress. You made a ton of progress. I'm super excited to see the next time you see her. Basically. Like, I love that, I love that, I really do. Really? I think um, the one lady that said she had to leave me. Sarah was going to take her out. Perfect. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah's been volunteering for a while, and she's also a foster for the shelter. So she um, she has a lot of relevant dog experience. I actually know her via fostering, um, which is really beautiful. Okay, so I wanted to show you this board because you're going to find out which caretakers are, to, are assigned to which room. So if you do need assistance in a certain room, you can radio for that specific caretaker. Um, or... It's also helpful when you have to radio from restricted so that then you can figure out who you're calling for. Out of courtesy, I always say, can an available caretaker assist me with getting a dog from restricted? Just because I know also they have other responsibilities in addition to what they're doing to help us out, right? Um, and then I wanted to show you really quickly the little folder outside of treatment. I'm sure you all are familiar with this, but I'm gonna put in a slip for little Tokyo that we met first, who was sick and sort of snotty. I'm gonna put in a medical slip and that medical slip, hi guys, goes right here on the outside of treatment once you fill it out. And then also collars, you asked about collars, right? Yes. What's your name? Glenn. Clint? Glenn. Glenn, I'm sorry. My, I'm hard of hearing after all the dogs. Um, collars are actually located are you guys familiar with this area back? Oh, yep, come. Sorry, let her, let her by real quick. Yeah, I'm sorry. So this area is dogs that have not yet been received and they're brought in by animal control. Generally, we're gonna give her some space as she's coming out through this area here. Um, and so these dogs, we're not walking, we're not interacting with, they have not yet had their vaccinations, they have not yet been able to see the vet. I just wanted to show you the collars right here. So if the dog that you're taking out has not is not wearing a collar it is really important to make sure we get a collar on them so after you get them back to the kennel it's a good idea to grab this try and approximate the size they do have tags on them make sure you're make sure that they have a tag on them i'll say it that way 
um, and get a, a, a collar on the dog if they do not have a collar on them. And then make sure to take a picture of the tag that's on the collar, share that with the kennel supervisor so they can enter that in the computer system. Just in the very wild event, definitely not gonna happen, but in the very small chance that that dog would get loose, you wanna make sure that, that we have identification on them so they can find their way back here. But they'll probably find their way back here because this is the only county run shelter. Yeah, okay, we're gonna go back this way. Um, so this dog coming out, is a little on the timid side. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you guys to sort of peel against the wall, just, whoosh, sorry, okay. Just uh, so your physical presence is not super intimidating. Uh, we had really, I, I took him out on Tuesday, we had some really positive interactions, but he is initially uh, more timid, although not as timid as uh, Jesse, the one in holding 11. Just wanna mix or something, and that why he's a squeaker? He's a, a pit. Really? Are you kidding? I'm glad. I'm so glad. Thank you. All right. So initially coming out, I grab the leash. I don't grab the dog, right? And he's excited. He's a little overstem. There's a lot of people here. I'm going to keep him close to me as we head outside. Not because I think he's going to do anything, but if he jumps on you, it just is unpleasant. We're going to go outside quickly. Because you know what? I bet he's got to pee. <laughs> Can you tell this walk? He's like, I got to go so bad. I got to go. Uh, that's another thing I wanted to note is that walking around the, um, the kitchen area, the dishwashing station, is uh, oftentimes volunteers that are not old enough to volunteer with the dogs will be working as dishwashers, which is amazing. I cannot, I, I, I cannot, yeah. He's a very good boy. Um, I, I honestly like would not have done this as a teenager and I did not have that level of, you know, altruism. So I have a lot of respect for it. Um, they're kids, they're under 18. Be careful around that door. They're gonna pop out and stuff like that. So that's another reason we wanna keep the dog really close to you. Hey, T. Hi, puppy. So T and I met on Tuesday, and I decided that I wanted to show him to you all if he was still here, which he probably is going to be because he is a, labeled as a pit bull terrier and is not eligible for adoption within the county, which limits his options out, right? Um, and I want to give him a little bit more exposure. He's a timid dog, but he's not hes not timid in the same ways that Jesse was, right? That the, the shepherd-looking guy was. He's timid in a... He wants to come near me, but he's also leaning, to, he's leaning away from me. He's got his ears up. He's curious, but he's not, he's not, he's not sold on any of y'all yet, you know? Um, so we're going to take a walk. I'm going to take him up to the run out here. Yeah, and I'm not really letting him near you because he's curious about you. Does the order, but I don't know. Does the shelter have any... Uh, agreements with any other organizations for these animals yeah there's a ton of, there's there's a yeah so yeah so there are there are established rescue partners that are able to to come in and to to take the dogs out of county and place them with a foster um, most of the rescue organizations are non-sheltering partnerships so they don't have a physical location where they could take the dog and put it in another kennel out of the county, for example. They have a couple partnerships, but unfortunately those shelters are still full. Yeah, Bubba's, yeah. And most, I, yeah, it, rescue, right, so right, yeah. Rescue. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Julie can speak to this better than I can. So she, so. Um, and, uh -oh. I can say, lost your our rescue, like the rescue I was with, we wouldn't pull as many pits because they hang around longer. They take a lot Yeah. So the, their options are limited in multiple ways uh, because of their visual appearance and they're, they're limited in housing most, most often. So there's, there's oftentimes if there's not a breed restriction in housing, there may be a weight restriction in housing. And most pit bull terriers fall on the top end of the weight restriction, um, which means that they're limited to 
possibly homeowners, right? Which is a smaller group of people than just people who live in a home. Um, so yeah, as you can tell with, with T over here, he's, con he's, he's shy. He's not super calm. He's holding himself in because as of right now, I'm the only thing that he's super sure about. And I'm only, he's only super sure about me because because we worked on this a little bit on Tuesday. And we said, oh, this, oh yeah. So, um, <laughs> I love those. I think you're so cute. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna go up to the run here. And I think he'd be comfortable if you all stood in the run with me. I'm gonna let him off leash and stuff. I just don't want anyone to make any like super sudden movements. Uh, you know, cause he is a shy boy. Now you'll notice with his shy behavior, it's not overtly shy. It's not the same tucked under body language as Tokyo had, right? But the wrinkles between his ears, his high and elevated ear position, uh, and his persistent lip licking and body tension are not indicating comfort. Now, part of that could just be like he's a shelter dog, right? But another part of it could be, oh, I don't know what that is. Let's not eat that. Another part of it could be, there's 12 people here. He doesn't know everybody. I'm gonna have everybody stay out here, except for James, uh, for the time being. Yeah. And so I like, especially if you get a chance for shy dogs, yeah. try a consent test there with him on the, on the chest. Yeah, he's like, I don't know what that thing pointing at me is, but I had to come over here and check that thing out. Yeah, yes. What do you guys think? He's a pretty sweet boy, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, oh, he's got an itch. Yep. So I got an itchy. Will you scratch that itchy for me? Yeah. Oh, and I like that. Great communication. He just stuck his butt right underneath your hand. He said, I like scratches here. Yeah. And maybe here on my neck, because I'm itchy. Um, yeah. yeah, so a dog like this, he presents pretty calm, but I don't know that he's always gonna be pretty calm because he is withholding a little bit. He might get to a, a home and decompress a little bit and, and be a, a little bit more medium or higher energy level. Um, I haven't seen him around other dogs. He might relax a little bit around other dogs. He definitely is curious yet enjoys human company once you're crouching down and giving him some little bit of space. <laughs> Look at him like, oh, of course, 100%, yeah. Look at him like arching his back into your hand, James. I love that. Like, I love it. Oh, you brought a chicken foot for him? <laughs> so yeah, so his name is, is T. I think he originally came in with the name Trouble and they decided to change that. Yeah. So it's T T E E, and I'm telling you his name multiple times because I would love it if you, you all got the chance to walk him because I like him a lot, and I think he's quite special. So, um, when I took him out on Tuesday, we spent a lot of time out here just like letting him kind of sniff around, giving him plenty of space, and I got him up on the agility run but he was very uncomfortable with the varying surface, with the slippery-ish surface. Um, so that took a lot of treats. I think he's just, you know, he might be potentially under-socialized a little bit and uh, definitely is coming in with a level of fear, but he is able to warm up to new people as he did with James very quickly. Um, so I think he's got a lot of potential for sure. Um, he does, yep. And I, I'm not certain the, the location of those, it, uh, it's not exactly like a pressure, pressure sore position. So I'm, I'm not sure if it's like self-imposed sometimes, especially if they have bad allergies, they could lick their paws a lot and it can create like a hot spot. Oftentimes when you see sort of scars on a dog's paws, they're like from pressure sores for dogs that have been kenneled for very long periods of time or possibly kenneled outside with the introduction of like moisture. Um, and then they've healed over. Uh, and those, those are things that happen over long periods of time. Um, 
but with him, I think it, that might be a little bit more. Maybe he's been licking his paws, um, potentially due to allergies. And I say that also because he was really scratching himself with his back paws. So pit bulls, uh, bully breeds in general, are prone to terrible skin allergies and itchiness and stuff like that. Um, and uh, so it could be that, but I would still probably give him some space in terms of his front paws and stuff. And if you did have him leashed up and he caught his leg in the leash or something like that, because he has some sores there that I might, I probably would, you know, very slowly move into moving his leg out of the leash as opposed to going right for, right for yanking the paw out. Because if he does have any pain associated with it or discomfort, you know, it's not going to make a good impression. So, oh, this is the first chicken foot he may have ever had in his life. Yeah, this is, this is like gourmet. Oh, yes. So what do you guys notice about his body language in this moment? He does have his tail wagging. What else do you notice? Leaning all the back. Way forward. I think, so you said leaning forward, you said leaning back. I think it's a little bit of both, right? Yeah. Like, not sure. What did you notice about Alex when he approached Alex before Alex crouched down? He looked at me with like curiosity when I crouched down and he moved on. It's curiosity and it's also a little bit of tightness and concern. Yep, yeah, you're correct. Yeah, yeah, which is beautiful. You responded to that exactly as I was hoping you would, which is coming down and just getting on his level. And he said, oh, that guy's not a threat. I'll move on, right? No big deal. But however, prior to that, he was concerned about you as demonstrated by the wrinkles in his forehead. His ears went like Scooby-Doo ears. They went up. I, I think Scooby-Doo is actually a really funny example because like in Scooby-Doo, like the uh, cartoon, Oh my God, are you videoing this? This is my stupid analogies. I love it. So when Scooby-Doo is like onto something, right? Yeah. He, his ears go up, which is like kind of the, the real actual dog behavior. And the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and T is not a very vocal dog or I have not observed a lot of vocalizations from him. So um, yeah, but he's a boy boys. Hi, hi. They're over here. Yeah, they're over here. <laughs> yeah. So I, I approach T, I probably would continue to approach him with the consent test on each interaction until he gives me consistently comfortable behavior. Even though we met previously and even though he's able to approach me now, because he is giving me, like you two both said a different thing. You said leaning forward, you said leaning back. He was doing a little bit of both there. Um, and he gave Alex, uh, and he's giving Julie a little bit of concern, but also hello treats. So it's conflict. Yep. So until I get a level of consistency, I'm going to continue to ask him, is it okay for the touch? And that's a safety thing, but it's also, I want to build a relationship with T. I think he's cool. I think he's a great dog. And I think based on my understanding of the environment that he's in on a day-to-day -day basis and the, the fact that I... I'm pretty sure he hasn't had a, a walk with a volunteer, at least since Tuesday when I took him out. This is, this is, you know, this is definitely just building a relationship with him. And I want to build a really strong relationship. Um, yeah. Takes it so gently. It's all lips. It's beautiful. Yes. I know, but boys. Yeah. Um, all right. So this is the last dog that we're going to interact with today. If I